You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Greetings and welcome to episode 121 of the Soul Forge Podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hello once again, one and all. Welcome to the Soul Forge. I'm Sean, your host. I've got a wonderful episode for you today. Wonderful just like always, of course. So sit back and relax, unless you're in a car. Don't uh, don't relax too much. Uh, today I was thinking, what the heck am I going to talk about that I haven't talked about already? And there's quite a few topics. There's hundreds more episodes to come, probably, maybe, if I keep going. But Uh, I was thinking about some ideas, and I was like, you know what, the last two episodes uh, was a couple of conversations I had with uh, Trish, my baby mama, Bishop's mom, and uh, talked about our life together and different versions of reality and whatnot. And I thought I could uh, keep going about that and uh, maybe talk more about decisions and uh, opportunities and things like that. But I want to switch gears a little bit. Uh, I thought I could talk about or maybe give you guys a bit of an update about what's happening at work. Uh, as you know, just over two weeks ago, Canada Post here in Timmins changed our routes around to make them more efficient. Uh, we had 18 routes, so now we have 17. So, of course, the remaining routes get uh, longer. So that happened, and uh, we're all pretty friggin' miserable. I'm sore every day. I walk about two to three kilometers more per day than I did on my old route, so that's great fun. But do you guys really want to hear about how miserable I am at my job and how I hate it and how um, I want to quit every day? No, you guys don't want to hear about that because that is depressing and that's not what you're here for. You're here for some uplifting kind of material topics and whatnot. But if you do want a whole episode about how miserable I am, I would be glad to provide that for you because I'm here for your support. I'm here to give you what you want. So uh, if you do want an upcoming episode about the misery and the drudgery of delivering the mail here in the Great White North, you can email me, soulforgepodcast.gmail.com and say, Hey, Sean, we would love to hear all about how much your job sucks. So if that's something that you want, let me know. And I'm, uh, I'm willing to provide you with any topic that you want. Not just about uh, the suckage of work, uh, any kind of topic you guys might want my perspective on, I'd be happy to oblige you and provide you with that material and my uh, witty insights, because that's what I'm here for. But that's not this week. And then I thought, um, what about talking about uh, Steel City NerdCon that just happened this past weekend? Me and brother Robin went back home to our old stomping grounds, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, where they held the second NerdCon. We had it at the Bush Plain Heritage Museum this time. I'd never been there before. And uh, there was a lot of old planes in this uh, old hangar warehouse type place. And uh, Robin and I had a table, a booth, and we sold some of our things. Um, That's pretty much all I can tell you about that. I can't do a whole episode about it because it wasn't that interesting. It was fun. Uh, It was on the Saturday, the 28th of September, 2019. Sold a few things, about half as much as I did last year. So I I didn't make quite as much money this year selling my old collectibles. Uh, I went down with four totes and came back with two and a half. So I did all right, better than Robin. Uh, And it was, it was okay. It was fun. Uh, I did a tour of the building, walking around and looking at the airplanes and looking at everybody else's uh, booths. And guess what? 
there was nothing I wanted to buy. Absolutely nothing. So does that mean people had crap? Or does that mean I'm um, exiting my collector phase? I'm not sure. It was good, though, because the money that I did make paid for the table and paid for the gas that uh, I spent getting there and back. And maybe a little bit extra money just for me, but not enough really to do anything with. But it, it was fun. It was great to see all the geeks and stuff and lighten my load of collectibles a little bit. And apparently we're going to have another NerdCon next year in October. Mid-October, I think he said, Mike, the organizer from, what the heck is the name of his store? Oh boy, I am losing it. Um, anyway, it's on Queen Street. Can't think of the name of the store, but anyway, it's, it, oh, Vintage Games and Junk. That's what it is. Yes. Oof. I was going to let it go there, but I remembered it at the last second. So cool store. I would love to open up the exact same kind of store here in Timmins, but I don't think the population is big enough to support it. So anyway, it's going to be a two-day event next year, and that's exciting. I'm going to have to go into my totes of things that I don't want to sell in order to make some money, I think, because I think people can tell that the stuff I was selling was the crap of my collection, not the really good stuff. But that's a problem for next year, and I'll tell you all about it then too. So what are we going to talk about this week? Oh, you can probably tell by the title. Uh, I don't know what I'm calling it yet. Maybe uh, Climate Change Crusaders, maybe Nature Girls, something like that. I've been thinking a lot about this because it's all over Facebook and all over the news. Greta Thunberg and her cohorts want to save the world. Uh, and guess what? I'm all for it, guys. I am all for it. Just like uh, the Netflix show Bill Nye Saves the World, we got to do something about the uh, terrible state of the environment and the, the big trouble that we're in, I guess you could say. Now, have you guys and girls listened to Greta Thunberg's uh, little speech that she did? Well, I don't want to call it a little speech that's kind of talking down to it, but it, it was, it's about a four-minute speech that I found on YouTube. I'll play it at the end of the, uh, the episode here in between the two end credit segments. But uh, you can hear the passion in her voice uh, the tears. Uh, she's worried about the state of the world, and she's not the only one. So I was thinking about that, and I'm just looking through Facebook, and I remember a long time ago when Facebook first came out, and we all started really getting into it in the uh, in in the late aughts, I guess you could say twenty two. Oh, sorry. 2007, 2008. Remember notes? You could write notes. I think you can still write notes, but they were more common back then. And I've got a couple here. There's one about uh, wanting to build a space ark to escape the world, and a, another one about something else similar to that, about uh, being scared about the end times. But May 7th, 2008, I'm just going to read this quick note to you guys. And uh, I guess I had just purchased a new used van. New to me, but used. It was five years old. It was a 2003 Dodge Caravan. So I, I, I just bought the van and I wrote this note here. And the note was called, My new van, dot, dot, dot. Is the glass half full or half empty? So I'll just read it line by line here. Here's a fine thought. I finally got a nice newer van that may last more than two years. This is great, right? I have to pay for this thing for five years, so it had better last at least that long. But here's the scary part. The world is running out of oil. Gas prices are crazy. And I wonder if there will still be any gas left when I'm done paying for the van. Or, if there is still oil and gas, will I be able to afford the gas to run the van? Five years is a long time. And so much can happen. I had a vision of hundreds of cars rotting and parked where they ran out of fuel. They're just sitting on the side of the road and people are living in them. Only the wealthy can afford houses and decent food. I see roving bands of thieves and murderers killing for fuel and scraps of food and warmth. I see remote settlements with hungry, dirty people guarded with any weapons they can find. Settlements with old cars and buses for houses and for walls of protection. Perhaps I've seen too many movies, but with the state of the world and the prices of everything going up, I can very well see all this coming about. Scary thoughts for sure. So that was the beginning of May 2008. That's, uh, that's 11 and a half years ago almost. So I've always had climate change and the state of the world on my mind. It's always been a thing that I've worried about. 
I, I remember always talking about wanting to reduce my carbon footprint and how uh, we better watch out because the uh, the ice caps are melting and temperatures increasing. Talked about it a lot. Uh, never so much as the girl crusaders, crusading young ladies. I, I don't know. I don't know what we should call them, uh, but the reactions that these girls are getting. Like uh, Greta, for example, uh, she was at the Climate Action Summit 2019, uh, something that the UN put on. And you, if you've watched the video, it's only four minutes long, approximately. But you, you can see the heartache in her eyes. You, you can feel it in her voice. And uh, it's, it's pretty incredible, actually. And all she wants is to have a future. And people are, uh, what are they doing? They're, they're making fun of her. They're trying to tear her down. Like, let me ask you this. Really, uh, okay, let's pretend, for example, that climate change is not happening. And these girls want to, well, we all, we all want to have the world in a better place. Okay, so climate change is not real. And we go ahead and we invest in renewable resources and wind and solar and all that good stuff. And, and we make the world a cleaner place. Okay, great. So what's the, what's the worst thing that we did? We created new industries and new technology and new jobs. Uh, we helped to cool the earth a little bit. Uh, we made sure that the icebergs, not the icebergs, the glaciers aren't melting because they're, uh, they're pretty much disappearing at an alarming rate. And uh, I, I just heard something somewhere I think it was, if all the glaciers melted, uh, the sea would rise by about 230 feet. So that's not enough to cover the entire planet, but it's definitely enough for uh, a lot of coastal cities to disappear and a lot of uh, island nations to be completely wiped out. So let's not do that. Let's save the world. Let's reduce our carbon footprints. Feet print? I don't know. Let's do things to make the world a better place so that uh, we don't have to worry about all this stuff. So what I wanted to do, I just wanted to talk about a few of these uh, climate change girls. I guess that's what I'm going to call them. It says here, I found an article from last week. It says, if Greta Thun Thunberg inspires you, you'll love these four teen climate activists too. And before I talk about them, did you guys know that... What they're doing is, well, the anti-Trump supporters uh, who are actually on Greta's side, they, they've uh, taken his uh, Make America Great Again hat and changed the slogan from Great to Greta. So, Make America Greta Again. It's kind of funny, using uh, Trump's words against him, which is awesome. So, anyway, so we've got Greta. Uh, she's 16 years old. She's from Sweden. And she's the most visible face of climate activism movement. And we've also got a Canadian on the team, Autumn Pelche. She's a 13-year-old, uh, no, excuse me if I get this wrong, a Anish Anishinaabe girl from Week Wem Kung, First Nation in Canada. Now, I'm not Native and I can't say those words properly, but I'm going to say Anishinaabe girl from Week Wem Kung, First Nation. And she's a vocal advocate for protecting water. And she basically said, uh, most people don't think water is alive or has a spirit, and but her people believe it to be true. They believe that water is sacred because we're born of water and we live in water for nine months. And she says, my heart is not for sale and neither is the water in our lands. One day I will be an ancestor and I want my great grandchildren to know I tried hard to fight so they can have clean drinking water. Our water deserves to be treated as human with human rights. We need to acknowledge our waters with personhood so we can protect our waters. Our waters should not be for sale. We all have a right to this water as we need it. Not just rich people, all people. No one should have to worry if the water is clean or if they will run out of water. No child should grow up not knowing what clean water is or never knowing what running water is. Mr. President, we need to work together. Now is the time to warrior up and empower each other to take a stand for our planet. We need to sustain the little we have now and de develop ways not to pollute the environment and sustain relationships with Mother Earth and save what we have left. I hope to keep my heart in a good place so I can come back and see how much we all have improved with our promise to Mother Earth. 
Let's not let water and Mother Earth down. Miigwech. Thank you. Canadian girl speaking up. That's awesome. We've got Mary Copany. She's an 11-year-old girl from Flint, Michigan, and she's been advocating tirelessly for the government to pay attention to the water crisis in her town since she was eight. Now, we all know, of course, about the, the water problems in Flint, and she wrote a letter to President Obama that convinced him to visit Flint, and she also raised over half a million dollars for the nonprofit organization Pack Your Back that has given school supplies and other resources to more than 25,000 kids in Flint and beyond. It's pretty cool for a young girl like that. Now, here's a name that I can't really say very well. Artemisa Zekrebibia is a 19-year-old from the Brazilian Amazon, and she spoke at the uh, climate strike in New York City la the last Friday. Now, that might have been two Fridays ago by now. Uh, about the increasing destruction of the land in her part of the world, pointing out that the indigenous people are overwhelmingly affected by climate change. And she says... We fight for our Mother Earth because the fight for Mother Earth is the mother of all other fights. We are fighting for your lives. We are fighting for our lives. We are fighting for our sacred territory, but we are being persecuted, threatened, murdered, only for protecting our own territories. We cannot accept one more drop of indigenous blood spilled. And the last one here is... Redima Pandey, and she's an 11-year-old from India, and she is among the group of 16 young people around the world, along with Thunberg, who filed a United Nations complaint against five of the world's largest polluters. So, what do you guys think about that? That's incredible. We've got these young girls. I don't know why there's uh, no young boys out there uh, fighting for uh, the environment. Maybe they're off riding their BMX bikes or whatever boys do now at this age. I don't. I don't know probably playing on their Xbox instead of riding their bikes, but whatever. That's what's going on here. Uh, they're, they're fighting for the future. They are tired of runaway capitalism and economic progress at the expense of the lands and the environment and the oceans and our health. And you know what? They're friggin' right. Each and every one of us should do our part, whatever we can do. That, that that can of pop, don't throw it in the garbage, throw it in the recycle bin. That's the little something that you can do. That's not much of anything, but it's something out of the landfill. And you know what? I don't, I don't even really know if recycling actually does anything. I would like to imagine that it does, but who can say? You know, because there, there's so much stuff going on that we don't know about. Remember uh, a few weeks ago, we finally found out that the uh, the Amazon rainforest is burning down to the ground? Nobody's talking about it, but it's happening. All these things are happening, and nobody's really talking about it. Uh, and, and the president himself says here, I'm just going to read a little bit of an article, says, The president of the United States openly mocked a teenage girl. After dismissing the 16-year-old climate activist Greta Thunberg in person and earning her ire, he tweeted to his 65 million followers, She seems like a very happy young girl looking forward to a bright and wonderful future. So nice to see. Dismissive, sarcastic, mocking, utterly typical. Is anyone surprised? The Republican Party has a teenage girl problem, and Thunberg knows what's up. On Monday, she gave an impassioned and emotional speech at the Climate Summit in New York. You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. The eyes of all future generations are upon you, and if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. We will not let you get away with this. Right here, right now is where we draw the line. And so, Trump took it personally, and that was why he did that tweet. And so she fought back, and she changed her Twitter bio to read, a very happy young girl looking forward to a bright and wonderful future. So that's what she did. Then there's a, there's a Fox commentator, Michael Knowles, and he called Thunberg a mentally ill Swedish child who is being exploited by her parents and by the international left. Uh, now, apparently he issued an apology, but really, they're, it's, like, it's like they're afraid of these people who want to save the world. And why don't they just help? So the article finishes up here saying, It's no wonder so many Republicans are scared of teenage girls. If teenage girls can accomplish so much and live so powerfully, even as they are mocked, condescended, demeaned, and shamed, imagine what they could do if we just shut up and got the hell out of their way. So really, let's do that. Let's help them. Let's get out of their way. Let, let's do whatever we can to save the world. Um, I, I guess this became kind of a, uh, a soapbox type message. Uh, but no, you know what? 
I, I agree with them, and I think the world is worth saving. I, I for one, want to see where we can go, how much we can do, uh, all, all the good stuff that can happen, because there's so much to live for, and life is so exciting, and other than work sucking, you know what? Everything's fine. Okay, so I got a little bit carried away, but... There, there are a lot of articles that you can read about these, these ladies, and, and there's more. I, I was just uh, looking through and seeing what else that I could find here, and, and there, there's more than just the four or five that we're talking about. There are so many. So just do a quick search on Google, and you'll, you'll find them. But anyway, in all the excitement, I totally forgot to play a promo for another podcast here on the ESO Network, so I'm going to do that right now. My name is Quoth. I tread paths by moonlight that others fear to speak of during the day. I've talked to gods, loved women, and written songs that make the minstrels weep. You may have heard of me. Join Mandy and her friends as they explore Patrick Rothfuss's best-selling fantasy series, The Kingkiller Chronicle. You can find us at castrequest.com or on the ESO Network. And that was wonderful. Hope you guys check out that podcast, whatever promo that I played while I edit this later on. Uh, But anyway, support the ESO Network, support the climate change fight, don't be scared, stand up for what you believe in, do all those things. Maybe leave a five-star review in the iTunes store for the podcast, I haven't asked for one of those in a while. You know what, it doesn't hurt to ask. That's all you need to do, just ask, help each other out. We're a global community, everything's important, everything is sacred, but nothing's as sacred as we want it to be. That's not the end, remember, but it could have been. But anyway, now I'm just rambling because there's so much more that I could say about this topic, but what I'd rather do is end the show and play Greta's speech for you guys right after the first set of end credits. So think about everything. Do what you can do. Do your part. And until next time, remember, not being where you want in life is okay. Doing nothing about it is not. This has been another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Find us on Twitter at Soul Forge Pod or email the show via soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. Soul Forge is a production of Sean Vanderloo and Friends. You can find Sean on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Vaderloo. Remember to visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links and share the show with everyone you know. Thanks for stopping by the Forge. We'll keep the fires lit until your next visit. My message is that we'll be watching you. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. How dare you continue to look away and come here saying that you're doing enough when the politics and solutions needed are still nowhere in sight. You say you hear us and that you understand the urgency. But no matter how sad and angry I am, I do not want to believe that. Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil, and that I refuse to believe. The popular idea of cutting our emissions in half in 10 years only gives us a 50% chance of staying below 1.5 degrees and the risk of setting off irreversible chain reactions beyond human control. 50% may be acceptable to you, but those numbers do not include tipping points, most feedback loops, 
additional warming hidden by toxic air pollution or the aspects of equity and climate justice. They also rely on my generation sucking hundreds of billions of tons of your CO2 out of the air with technologies that barely exist. So a 50% risk is simply not acceptable to us, we who have to live with the consequences. To have a 67% chance of staying below a 1.5 degrees of global temperature rise, the best odds given by the IPCC, the world had 420 gigatons of CO2 left to emit back on January 1st, 2018. Today that figure is already down to less than 350 gigatons. How dare you pretend that this can be sold with just business as usual and some technical solutions? With today's emissions levels, that remaining CO2 budget will be entirely gone within less than eight and a half years. There will not be any solutions or plans presented in line with these figures here today because these numbers are too uncomfortable and you are still not mature enough to tell it like it is. You are failing us. But the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you. And if you choose to fail us, I say we will never forgive you. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.